Our next guest saying when it comes to Tesla, he doesn't always agree with Elon Musk, but he made the company what it is. Let's bring in a former Tesla board member, Steve Wesley, to discuss. Steve, always good to have you. Um, you've been positive, and rightly so, for quite some time on the company, on the stock to a certain extent. But I do wonder, after listening to yesterday's call, obviously the competition that has come to the fore, the price cuts, the lack of any real catalyst in 2024, seemingly, where you stand right now. Tesla is in a bit of a situation right now. The release of Tesla's Q4 earnings report has sparked a whirlwind of reactions, and it paints a complex picture of one of the most talked about companies in the world. But have you ever wondered if the market is actually right about Tesla's growth potential? What if Tesla's growth story remains intact? And all this is just mere market speculation. Tesla's latest quarterly earnings have become a focal point of discussion, reflecting the company's ongoing journey in a rapidly evolving market. And despite the substantial achievements, the report highlighted some areas of concern that have significantly impacted investor sentiment. Today, we're going to be exploring these areas of concern, as well as what the true growth story for Tesla really is. So stay tuned as we dive into these moments of discovery. Yeah, the Chinese are coming. BYD has a, an automobile out there that is a real competitor, not just in the Chinese market, of course, but in Europe as well. Probably never going to be here. So I wonder, are they up to it? Do you think that, you know, again, th that timetable, Musk has typically been optimistic when it comes to the timing of things and sometimes uh, wrong. Do you think they can get there in terms of that model you're talking about to make them competitive as soon as the end of next year? I think they'll get initial sales out by then, but they need to do better. Here's the big picture most uh, investors don't fully understand. We're living in an international world. Tesla dominates the U.S., 51% market share, more than everybody else combined. But we're now the second largest market in the world uh, after China. China sold 8 million EVs last year. All of Europe together did about 2.6 to 3 million. U.S. and Canada did one. 0.6 million. So where do you want to be number one? China. So U.S. dominating, uh, Tesla dominating in U.S., dominating, frankly, in Europe. But they've got to get out to that rest of the world because that is where the money is being made. But there's one other issue investors need to look at, and that is for the last 10 years when it comes to EVs, it's all been about range and price. Now it's moving over to being about tariffs and privacy. Because as you point out, uh, you know, will Tesla and will BYD come to the U.S.? They're absolutely coming to the U.S. They're already selling buses here successfully. They've started selling in Europe. But consumers are increasingly going to ask the question, do I feel comfortable driving a car with a Chinese IoT device that knows where I'm going, maybe listening in on me? That's a big issue. And then the tariff issue is another big one. U.S. needs to be careful on tariffs because we may feel good with the 25 percent tariff we've slapped on. But there's a much bigger auto market in China than there is here. And if China reciprocates, uh, we may think twice about that. With a blend of missed expectations, financial resilience and innovative strides, Tesla's current scenario paints a fascinating study for investors, analysts and enthusiasts alike. Today, we'll delve into the truth of Tesla's recent earnings report, Wall Street's reaction, the company's financial health and its ambitious future projects. And also, we'll explore the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for Tesla and its investors. So stay tuned so you don't miss out on any detail. Hey guys, welcome back to Tesla tomorrow. Contrary to many optimistic forecasts, Tesla's missed its recent expected earnings per share and revenue targets, and the shortfall has played a key role in the stock's performance, especially with after-hours trading. At the time of this video, Tesla's stock price dipped below $200 per share a notable decline from its previous position. No doubt, Tesla stock tends to experience a drop after earnings announcements. However, this quarter's miss has accentuated the trend. In fact, the immediate aftermath of the earnings report saw a 7.66% decrease in Tesla stock price in pre-market trading. While this reaction is definitely not unexpected, as Tesla's stock has shown a pattern of post-earnings volatility, the drop to sub-$200 levels marks a significant moment for potential investors who've been waiting for a more accessible entry point into Tesla's stock. So what is it really? An opportunity or a warning? And should investors be buying? Or is it time to start selling their Tesla shares? Let's find out. But before we do, if you like this type of content, hit that like button, subscribe, 
and turn on post notifications to keep up to date on everything going on with Tesla. Historically, Tesla's earnings report often results in varied reactions, with the stock price typically falling regardless of the positive aspects of the report. Media coverage and Wall Street's responses also play a key role in shaping investor perception. However, in this instance, the combination of missed financial targets and broader negative sentiment has resulted in a pronounced impact on Tesla's stock value. Over this video, we'll take a deeper look at Wall Street's reaction and the broader implications of Tesla's financial performance, and as we delve into these aspects, the complexity of Tesla's situation becomes increasingly evident, showcasing a company in its pivotal moments during its journey. Shares of Tesla down 12% since reporting that big Q4 earnings missed the other day. Warning of a slowdown in vehicle volume growth this year as well. Joining me now at Post 9, Wedbush's analyst Dan Ives. He was with me the other day, just ahead of that report. He doubled down on his bullish case for that company. So he's back. Uh, welcome back. Great. Did you come back today to say I was wrong? All right, man, look, I, we, we talked about we were dead wrong in terms of the call into the quarter. I'd almost go and say almost 25 years doing it, probably a top five worst call that we've had going into a quarter. We thought, as we talked about, that they'd put the line in the sand for margins. Price cuts are mostly over, and instead, it was a circus show from a conference call. They left the door open for price cuts, didn't give guidance. Musk talked about the 25 percent in terms of the, the ownership and the AI, and it went off the rails. And that's why we're here today, basically, you know, looking at it and thinking, like, okay, now what's the step forward? Put out that top 10 list, which we believe could be an inflection point to how we ultimately get higher. Are you reassessing essentially now everything? about this company going forward? Look, we took it off top picks list because in the near term, from a catalyst perspective, no smoke and mirror. I mean, you don't have the catalyst where you could ultimately say, this is going to outperform in the next 30 days, 60 days. Now, in terms of the long-term thesis, look, we remain firmly bullish because it's my view, and it goes back to similar Netflix and 11 with the streaming. You go back to Jobs in 07 with iPhone. We've been through so many different evolutions of companies. I think view this more as an evolution into the next phase with AI, and I view the mass market vehicle sub $30,000. So we don't throw that out, but no doubt in the near term, I mean, it's been a disaster this week. The skepticism and reaction from Wall Street to Tesla's Q4 earnings was sort of mixed, with a lean towards skepticism, and analysts who often grapple with Tesla's unpredictable nature found the latest report underwhelming. The sentiment was echoed by Dan Ives, a seasoned Tesla tech investor who expressed disappointment in the lack of strategic and financial clarity from Tesla's leadership. According to him, the expected result was a more mature approach from Elon Musk and his team, but it was met with a train wreck of a conference call, contributing to a dampened confidence when it comes to investors. This latest lukewarm response was also reflected in the revised price target from several of the analysts, and for this reason, there's a notable trend of lowered expectations, which signals a shift in Wall Street's outlook on Tesla's near-term potential. However, we've got to note that despite these adjustments, it's crucial to remember that analyst predictions are not always accurate and should be taken with a grain of caution. And so, the key takeaway here is the growing gap between Tesla's ambitious long-term vision and the immediate market realities, and this is causing ripples in investor circles, with many debating whether or not Tesla's current challenges are merely short-term hurdles or signs of deeper issues. Our next guest saying when it comes to Tesla, he doesn't always agree with Elon Musk, but he made the company what it is. Let's bring in a former Tesla board member, Steve Wesley, to discuss. Steve, always good to have you. Um, you've been positive, and rightly so, for quite some time on the company, on the stock to a certain extent. But I do wonder, after listening to yesterday's call, obviously the competition that has come to the fore, the price cuts, the lack of any real catalyst in 2024, seemingly, where you stand right now. Well, look, let's give Tesla credit where credit's due. They've just posted not one, but three consecutive great years. They grew 71% in 2020. They grew 51% in 2021. Last year, 19%. Those are great numbers. The challenge is going to be 2024 because they're in between new product offerings. The Model 3, Model Y, phenomenal successes. Model Y today, the largest selling vehicle in the world, gas or electric, stunning. But what about 2024? What they really need 
to catch up growth wise with the BYD that grew uh, proportionally 70% last year, delivered 1.6 million vehicles to Tesla's 1.8. They're going to pass Tesla this year for sure. Tesla desperately needs to get that $25,000 model into market by late next year. So for this year, you know, they, they've got three shots on goal here that they're telling analysts. You know, the first is the, the $25,000 model, but how soon can you get that out? The second is they're clearly a leader in autonomous driving robo-taxis. I think that's at least three to five years out. The interesting play that few people talk about is the Tesla Energy Division did $6 billion this year. It's growing at 54% a year. They're working on being essentially the world's largest utility. Um, that's an interesting play. Those are numbers most auto companies would die for. But 2024 is going to be a tough year. Tesla's going to have to execute on everything they do from opening the plant in Mexico to getting the plant in India built to uh, selling some more Cybertruck. It's going to be an interesting battle and the Chinese are coming. With all this going on, we must say that Tesla's financial resilience does remain a notable highlight. The company reported nearly $30 billion in cash reserves, a formidable war chest that offers stability in uncertain times. This financial strength is a significant factor in Tesla's ability to weather macroeconomic challenges, indicating fluctuating interest rates and supply chain disruptions. However, Tesla's journey is not without its obstacles. The same report that showcases its robust cash positions also reveals a decline in gross margins. This decrease is primarily attributed to ongoing price cuts, which, while expanding market reach, are impacting a company's profitability. Additionally, Tesla did not provide production guidance for the upcoming year, fueling uncertainty among investors about its future growth prospects. The macroeconomic environment has also been less than favorable for Tesla, with rising interest rates, global conflicts, and supply chain issues all shaping the situation. These factors, combined with all things going on in the market, suggests that while Tesla faces immediate challenges, there could be brighter times ahead. It's important to remember that Tesla's financial health is a mix of strong cash reserves and challenging margins, set against a backdrop of tough macroeconomic climates. And the company's ability to navigate all of this is crucial in determining the future trajectory. One of the standout aspects of Tesla's recent performance is its impressive strides in the energy sector. The energy storage business, with Megapack particularly, has shown remarkable success. Year over year, Tesla's energy business has grown by 54%, outpacing the growth of the automotive sector. And this is a significant indicator of the potential scale and impact of Tesla's energy solutions. The energy sector's expansion is not just about financial growth, but it's about solving key challenges around the world, and Tesla's ability to store sustainable energy is a vital thing in the shift towards renewable energy sources. The demand for Tesla's energy storage solution is also evident in the backlog of orders for megapacks, highlighting the market's recognition of the importance of them. And the anticipated S-curve growth trajectory for Tesla's energy business shows that it could eventually surpass the automotive segment in terms of scale and impact. So this is a pretty key moment for Tesla. Similarly, Tesla's relentless pursuit of innovation is evident in FSD, its next-generation vehicle platform, and the development of the Optimus robot. The FSD version 12, which is set for broader release in North America, marks a big step towards fully autonomous driving, and this advancement is likely to further Tesla's lead in the realm of autonomous vehicles. The next-gen platform is another area of focus, with Tesla's making pretty good progress towards this production when it comes to mass-produced affordable vehicles. This development is crucial for Tesla's goal of broader market penetration and democratizing electric vehicles. According to Tesla, the planned production of this affordable model is set for the second half of 2025. Coupled with the excitement that comes with this news, it emphasized Tesla's commitment to innovation and accessibility. I look at your rate, you still haven't outperformed, right? So you haven't, you haven't taken that. How do you fundamentally have an outperform at 1.2 trillion market cap and an outperform now that it's down to 581 billion? Sure. It's almost been cut in half. Mm -hmm. But how do you still have an outperform on it? Yeah, it's a great question. It's my view that going forward, the margin story, this is it's going to trough. So I view like when they cut costs, you could actually start to get margin expansion 20, 30 percent. Then all of a sudden, five dollars of earnings becomes eight to ten when you look out in the next two years, especially on AI. I mean, our view here is this could be the best long term AI play out there.
And that's what we talk about. I think it's ultimately going to form into some sort of holding structure from an AI perspective with Optimus, Dojo, and others that, that, that must be. The best this. AI play out there? Are you, are you, I mean, what are you talking about in terms of automakers? You're talking in total, like yeah, so, against Microsoft? So, so I'm saying longer term, from, from an automotive and from where they could go with Dojo and Optimus, you could argue that longer term, this is going to turn to much more of a broader company. Now, as we've talked about, the AI revolution is led by the godfather of AI, Jensen, NVIDIA, Microsoft, everything we're seeing in tech. But for, for Tesla to, to mis-evaluate that this will be an AI story, this will be what I view as almost, I'll call it an air pocket, and it's more than an air pocket, but I think we are going to see at one point two and a half, three million vehicles per year. And at that point, Scott, we look back at this, this is more the opportunity, a very bad bump in the road, rather than the time that this is a structural, uh, you know, what I'd say, change in the story. Okay. Perhaps the most intriguing part of all of this is the Optimus robot. The progress made in its development from sorting Lego blocks to folding t-shirts is testament to Tesla's advancements in robotics and AI. While the full capabilities of Optimus aren't yet realized, its potential impact on various industries is evident in everyday life and it could be enormous. And Elon Musk's vision of Optimus surpassing all of the Tesla business areas in impact and revenue is bold but not unfounded, given the company's track record of achieving ambitious goals. Overall, we think that Tesla's recent earnings report and its aftermath paint a good picture for the company's inflection points. And while there are short-term challenges, particularly in the automotive sector, the company's financial resilience, innovation in energy storage, advancements in autonomous driving, and groundbreaking work in robotics suggest a bright future. And as a Tesla investor, it's important to weigh these factors and decide whether the current dip in Tesla stock price is temporary or an opportunity. Also, on the other hand, we also believe Tesla's long-term vision and continuous innovation are indicators of its potential to remain a leader in the technology and sustainable solution sectors. So it's not just about immediate returns, but being a part of a revolutionary journey to reshape the future. What do you think? Let us know down below. And if you want to know more about what Tesla's been up to over the last few days, go ahead and click on this next video on your screen. See you there.